Hello, I'm John Wiles and today I'm talking to Michael Hooter of the Cologne Institute for Economic Research. Um, Michael and his colleagues, uh, Bertold uh, Busch, uh, Matthias Dillmeier and uh, Henry Gerke, have produced an absorbing and, uh, and interesting report on Brexit and Europe's future. Um, and you can see it on the Wonk uh, website, obviously. Um, what makes it particularly interesting is that you use uh, a, uh, an analytical technique of game theory to examine uh, various possible ne uh, negotiation scenarios and to try and come to some conclusions about which would be the best scenario for the EU and which might be the best for the UK. But can we begin, can I just ask you to give a brief explanation of what uh, game theory is and why it's appropriate in this case? No, game theory is the approach to understand in which way negotiation could be handled and uh, what are the possible perspectives of both sides who want to negotiate something very difficult. And we try to apply this theory here on the setting between United Kingdom and uh, European Union, saying that for both sides, they're, in general, they have a chance to be more on a compromising level or uncompromising, more on a level to say, OK, let's try to get an appeasement on this very difficult topic on Brexit or to get a very strong strategy and we defined to understand which way they could organize the negotiations uh, red lines what are the red lines for the both sides and the red line for great britain is quite clear they want to get um, back the the, the policy uh, um, adjustment on migration they uh, want to get back uh, the handling on the border control uh, for the european side it's quite clear they should avoid that there's an incentive for free rider for some other european member states so if there could be an outcome that it's uh, possible to start a Brexit or something else, an, an exit from the European Union, uh, without any payment, but with it staying in the, in the big economic advantages as a member, for example, of a uh, common market, that should define, define a very Can I just interrupt you there? incentive to, to go on with, with, uh, for free rider or for the, all the other members. Can I just uh, interrupt you there, uh, Michael? Forgive me, but um, you, you, have, you postulate four uh, uh, negotiating scenarios, as it were, um, the, the WTO, cherry-picking, Norway and Norway Plus, um, each of which is a possible basis for agreement or disagreement, indeed. Um, what, uh, which of these four do you think actually is most advantageous for the EU and why? And which is most advantageous for the UK and why? So the case for the UK is very simple and very clear. This is a cherry picking strategy. It's uh, quite clear that it's, interest, it's of most interest for the British people, the British economy, especially the British financial sector, to stay in to a certain degree in the European Union. That means to have the advantage on the one hand, but on the other hand, to get back the policy um, adjustment, the policy uh, chances on migration and, and border control and something like that. For the European um, Union, the perspective is a little bit different. As I said, they should avoid cherry-picking incentives, so they should be, have a strong negotiation strategy. And the outcome is saying there is no, uh, no room for get a compromise to get a, an appeasement outcome. So to say, in the end, from the European Union side, the VTO, WTO position for UK should be the best outcome that a, a country who want to leave the EU has to stay out in the future. Yes, I, and the, um, the, the, the problem there, though, is, uh, sorry, you, you distinguish between short and long-term advantage as well. Um, and uh, your conclusion about um, the WTO and an uncompromising position is the most advantageous for the, uh, for the EU um, is a long-term advantage. But I think also, do you not suggest in the report that um, there could be some economic advantage to the EU in the short term on Norway. Was it Norway or Norway Plus that you... Yeah, yes, there could be in the short term uh, an argument more prevailing saying that we should avoid any disturbance of the trade relations, we should avoid any disturbance of the financial intermediation between UK and the European Union. Therefore, it could be in the short term perspective a good idea for European Union side 
to be more flexible, to be more open for the needs of the British government and to say, okay, we should have a more compromise strategy and we should open something like Norway Plus, that means a similar position than Norway, staying in the common market, but they have to pay something. But uh, the difference Norway Plus to Norway is that they should uh, avoid the free movement of labor. Have you had a chance to look at the British government's white paper that was produced yesterday on uh, the negotiations? Yes, I looked on this paper and I saw the speech uh, Theresa May gave two weeks ago and uh, also in Davos. In general, my interpretation is that it's the second attempt of a, creating a negotiation strategy. The first attempt was to travel around Europe asking all the other heads of state, head of government and to get a, a pre-negotiation outcome to get an, some idea what could be solved or could be defined in advance. All the other members said, no, there's no way, please send that first year letter. And no, the second attempt of the British government is to be more strong, to be uh, more clear, that should be a hard Brexit, and there's some argument of threat in this new uh, negotiation strategy. Finally, and briefly, what, uh, what do you think the actual outcome will be at the end of the Article 50 period? I think in the end um, there should be something between Norway plus and Norway. There should be a position for the British uh, economy, for the British society, being staying as a member of the European uh, common area. Um, on the other hand, it should be clear there should be a difference between the, uh, the status of a member and the status of a non-member. But at the end of the day, it's also possible for me that the British side will maybe change their behavior because the people see the negative, will see the negative impact of Brexit, and maybe the people will have a different mood in two or three years' time. It will take a long time to get out the negotiations, and maybe there's a chance, I would say, of 30% that Brexit won't happen. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed for the conversation, and um, we'll be looking out for your next report on Brexit. Goodbye, Thank Phil. Bye-bye.